Hey there internet friends, Larry the Music Guy here. Today we're going to talk about home studios and specifically designing and the thought process behind um, basically creating your, your creative space um, and what you want from that. And immediately there's a big fork in the road and that fork is one direction is you're going to design and build and make your own space and the other fork is no, I don't have the money to do that. I don't have the space. I don't have any of those resources. I've got to deal with what I've been given, and that might be a 12 by 10 spare bedroom or an old space in the basement, and you've got to just deal with that. So I've recently lived both of those <laughs> in the same home, and it's an interesting story, and I'll tell you about that here in a little bit, and we'll look at uh, how I built and designed my own home studio in my basement um, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about what happened and why I'm in the space that I'm in right now which is a former bedroom so anyway we'll talk more about that right after this guys this is where uh, my studio actually really does start um, on each side of the control room which is right, what was originally down the hallway here is uh, you want on each side of it a sound lock so basically a hallway with a door and then another door at the very end so technically this is where the studio actually started as we go down the hallway here right here. I'm embarrassed to show you this, but just so you know, this was my vocal booth. Right now it's just filled with insulation and carryover stuff from my studio being no longer here. And as you walk in here, this is what is the start of the control room. Um, what's special about this that I built is, and I don't know if you'll get a good perspective of this or not, but these are five degree walls here. So basically they are going outward, just like this over here. Because what you don't want in a control room, a real studio, is square walls if you can avoid it. And at the back I have uh, base traps that are in that little triangular area there and you'll see kind of at the top here how that back area is basically all the music's being funneled to the corners because it would come in there hit that and the, hit that right there and then it would bounce it to the left and in theory we're gonna trap you want the music to only pass through you once when you're mixing so set in the back here and I'll see if you can see this or not but there are bass traps built into the wall right here so inside there is two long hanging fiberboard pieces um, hanging on some rope so they're basically suspended there off just basically hanging suspended in air and they um, have insulation glued on each side and I got them cut at different lengths so that they affect different frequencies and basically the theory is that when that bass goes back there in that corner it gets trapped inside there and those fiber boards basically vibrate and catch the bass and cancel it out so what's cool is and it took me forever and I did actually make a video documentary I haven't done anything with it yet but I basically created it so that the ports are still useful basically that is a port that goes all the way back to the corner which allows the base to go to the back. Same here, once again, goes back there. We got acoustic treatment on the back wall that was for catching mid-range and high frequency stuff. And as you can see here, this is actually a home theater room now. And I'll put some pictures up here as I talk to kind of show you. So, I basically had a console that was built in right here. I actually had it anchored to the cement floor in the basement here. And 
had built-in power, had a snake run into my vocal booth, which was over here. And there was a window right there so that you could see into the vocal booth. And you could literally see where the TV's at. There used to be a window. And you could literally see from the vocal booth through the control room into what is on the other side is the live room. And the live room um, is where the drums are set up and where we record live. Um, also where I had band practice at. So that is basically right there, just in front of the couch here, is where my console used to be set up. Built-in little bookcases where I kept all my CDs and everything there for a while, but... Anyway, here, uh, this is the other, what I call sound lock. So this was kind of my, this is my little utility area where my electric's at. It's where I keep my cables, oh, as it fell down there, that looks nice. Um, this is just my back room here. I got some little fun memorabilia stuff here. Big Kiss fan going up. What inspired me to want to play rock and roll music. Um, I've got a little storage back here. This is the other end of the hallway, and this is going down in the live room here, so. I don't have everything completely set back up yet, but this is basically where I would record the live drums in this room. The reason that is no longer a uh, control room is because we went to try and sell our house. We basically took it off the market because people couldn't wrap their head around what they would do with the studio. So I tore the console and everything down, turned it in a home theater room just as I'm getting ready to relist the house. The house we had our offer in sold. COVID was hitting, we didn't want to get into a bridge loan situation not knowing what COVID would do. And basically we just said, screw it, I guess we're going to stay here. So, But this is my live room here, this is where we band practices. So there used to be a window right there and that's the control room on the other side. But once again, this is a sound lock, so each side of the control room had basically two dead air spaces that protected it from sound getting in there and just making it super efficient um, in design. Now here's another thing I wanted to show you real quick. I mean I got really crazy with this. Um, it was probably and it most definitely probably will be it now at my, this point in my life. The only time I was going to ever build a studio I was going to do it right. So as part of that design basically I got a 2x4 two by, um, two by wall here and a 2x6 wall here and then there's actually dead air space about an inch and a half two inches in between here but I covered that up so you can't see it so really the only thing that's connecting these two walls together is literally this board because behind that there's a there's an air space there but you can see the thickness we got a two by six wall here and then a two by four wall going down that way so what was cool is I could record um, down the hallway here what I typically would do, and it sounded really sweet, is I would set my amplifier um, usually up back where all that storage stuff is at, mic it up close, then put another mic kind of back in the hallway a little bit, and then pan it kind of left and right, and it would give you a really killer uh, stereo effect, give it a real kind of uh, definitely very good stereo imaging. Uh, so you could isolate a guitar in there. And then I actually built this one specifically for isolating a guitar. And I even made it so you could plug your quarter inch cable in right there and literally be out here plugged into the wall with your amp inside here. And I apologize with my basement being tore up. This is kind of a hot mess, but it's storage right now. But basically you can put an amp in there, shut this door. You know, most bass players go direct anyway. Um, you can basically be in here with your band, playing guitar, it's isolated. You know, I'm sure you're going to hear drums through there a little bit, but really it's going to be pretty darn isolated. If you need to punch in, punch out on anything, I don't think you'd even probably know. And it definitely keeps it from getting into the drums. So right outside my uh, live room, uh, this used to be my son's bedroom. He's now an adult and no longer lives here. So basically this was my only option, which comes to be part two of the thing that we're going to talk about after I give you the tour here. 
um, of what I currently have and what I previously had and talk about the two different scenarios but this now is my um, basically my home recording studio the control room if you will this is where I make my videos this is where I do all my recording I got my YouTube soft white light up there got nice Yamaha HS5s along with the HS8 subwoofer down below for mixing it's pretty much my primary mixing uh, for my music just recently got a Mac Mini with the M1 16 megabyte of RAM very happy with it very awesome I just got the Clark Technic it's the 1176 copy the 1176 KT limiting amplifier it's a it's supposed to be an awesome uh, tube compressor we're gonna find out um, my SSL 2 plus right now my primary interface over here is kinda like my little vocal booth area um, really trying to make this area over here pretty dead you'll see that I've got some I got some corner treatment over here corner treatment over here I'm actually gonna build some triangular base traps to go down here this is actually a big panel behind here that I built. It's a one by four um, lumber as the frame, and then you got uh, basically open face insulation back in there. So good mid range. I wanted that right behind my speakers and right in front of where I'm talking to help um, deaden that sound. And it's definitely come a long ways from when I first came in here. And this is where I keep all my amplifiers except for my. Um, my Friedman Runt 20, that's my main amp for the band. And uh... Alright guys, hey man, I hope you enjoyed the little tour I gave you of what is currently my home theater room, my formerly my main mixing room, my, my console room, um, through the sound locks, the design of the sound locks and all that, um, to build that barrier and make it basically airtight chamber in there. Uh, to my live room, which is right through the door over here, into my current studio, which is my son's old bedroom. He's now an adult and he's not in here anymore, so this is basically the space that I was dealt with after trying to sell my house and it all falling through and then losing my kind of my dream studio. But you know it is what it is I'm starting to get this room dialed in it's taken a little bit of time to get it going but um, honestly I think more of us are dealing with this situation of not being able to design your own home studio that you have just got like a specific space so I want to talk a little bit about some things that are common for both designing as well as you know being dealing with your space um, uh, and then some that are specific for both so First off, talk about the design of what I did um, in mine. So it was an Australian uh, design that was uh, based off of a five degree walls on the outside walls in the control room so that they would kind of go out like a W. Um, and think kind of like an auditorium, any auditorium you've ever seen, you know, the any kind of outdoor theater that everything kind of goes up and out and like this because it's trying to amplify and and push the music outward like that and that's kind of what you want to do in a control room is you don't want square walls you want uneven walls basically and if you can set that so that the music travels and it forces it and in the design of my studio it kind of came up and it went out like this and then it dipped back down the very back wall so what that was trying to do was trying to make that the music passed just once trapped in the backside walls and the bass traps and then it wouldn't come out back to you again and basically create standing waves so that's really whether you're dealing with the space that you've just been dealt with or you're designing some and specifically if you're designing something there's no excuse that you shouldn't be able to design something uh, within reason that's going to be a really really sound deadened room and 
but even with like with the space I'm dealing with right now, I can tell it still needs a little bit more work, but I mean it's way better than what it was. You know, I've got two panels sitting back there that I built that are one by six. They've got really thick foam. I wanted that back behind my my amp so that that wasn't bouncing off the wall when I'm you know running one of my amps in here recording live. Um, I've got one back behind my monitors back over here. I've got some corner um, foam going on. I'm still got some more to do, but it's really coming around. And the thing is, is whether you're designing something also that's common or dealing with here, you have to know your equipment. You have to know your room. You got to be able to take your mix downs and take it out to a car, take it to somebody else's house, listen to it, and see if what you're hearing in your room is truly what you're hearing when you go to your car. I just think the car, you know what you like your music to sound like in your car, you know, and reference something. Put put in that CD that you really like the way it sounds. If that's what you're going for, try to match something. Go back and listen to it and, and then reference yours. And then come back down and make adjustments. You know, I'm running some uh, Yamaha HS5 studio monitor speakers and then an HS8 sub. And I really like sub. I... I I want to hear it and feel I want to know the way the bass is reacting in a mix. And it's so hard to do that without a sub. That's me. Everybody's a little bit different when it comes to that. But man, I wish I would have went out and spent the money on um, some really good studio monitors like these Yamahas. I am so impressed. My vocal mixing game has really stepped up. I'm really excited to start trying to mix down some of my... Um, songs that I got going on. Some I might re-sing again because I think um, between having a new um, Clark Technique 1176 um, compressor um, I think there's some things I stepped up my game with uh, doing that so and that's important whether you're designing something or you're just dealing with your space you gotta have some good reference speakers I mean spend some money if you're mixing stuff don't mix on headphones I'm telling you just don't mix on headphones. If you do and you're lucky that you you know your headphones very well and you know how to mix, but I've never had any good luck and anybody I've ever seen talking about it doesn't recommend it. So, But basically, you got to get to know your room, the way it sounds, know your speakers, know your mix, take it out, reference it, come in and make adjustments. You know, as soon as I got the sub in here, I had to mess with the crossover as well as the actual loudness of it until I got to a point where it was very similar to what I was hearing inside my truck. So it probably took me a good two or three days to get that close enough where I felt like it was within pretty good you know reference of, of each other so um, but yeah I mean whether you're designing something building something you gotta practice and know your stuff and control rooms and vocal booths are the think are the biggest things you got to think about when you're talking about air actual airspace that you're dealing with. Um, I was fortunate enough I had a vocal booth over there and it was on the back side of that five degree wall, so it had an uneven wall. So that was part of that design was you put the vocal booth on the wall of the five degree wall, which made it so that you had one square wall and then one wall that was five degree. So my vocal booth wasn't a square room either. Um, now my live room was more of a square room. It's just kind of what I had to deal with in my space. So you got to pick and choose your battles if you're designing something. What space you got? You know, I have a 2,000 square foot basement, and I think I used about 40% of the basement for the studio, and that's probably not true because that includes I had to basically frame in my HVAC room so I could kind of keep that all quiet away from the studio as well so um, but either way you know I got to build my own studio and then I also got to tear it down and turn it into home theater and then get stuck with not having it and now here I am so either way you guys find your own space where you can be creative you know I came in here and I like you know I've got some LED lighting that I can turn down the lights to any color that I want so you know it helps create a mood I got a little bit of LED lighting back there um, I got some other creative ideas I want to do here that when I'm all finally finished I'll give you an updated tour of my current uh, studio but um, I hope you find this helpful man if you got some questions about my studio and what I did um, 
how I framed in the windows. I mean, I could kind of have a, I'd be happy to do some more videos on that. It was a very, very cool design. And if I happen to find, when I dig through all my old stuff, the actual plans, I will do a specific video on that. But um, yeah, man, if you got some questions, leave them for me down there. I really enjoy uh, seeing people leave comments down below there. And I really do appreciate you watching the videos. And it's been a busy summer. The band's back playing again. So um, I'm going to try to get back on the, on the train of getting some videos put together. I got a couple other ideas I'm working on. I'm going to be working on those as well. So hopefully fire out a couple more videos here in the next couple weeks. So I uh, appreciate everybody watching till the very end and, uh, you know, get on out there and uh, remember to always get our done.